Hello everyone. This video covers a uh, section 3.9 related rates. That's the title. Remember the rate is referring to derivatives. Okay. And mostly these are war problems, which uh, many students are not happy with war problems, but it is what it is. So the strategy to solve these problems, every book has a different strategy, and most of, most of them have the same idea. First, I recommend you to read the problem at least three times, or at least two times, but at least three times, okay? And once you read the problem, you should get like, uh, write down the given information. Okay. And then uh, step two, once you have read the problem multiple times and you have written the given information, it can be very useful to draw a diagram, okay, or a picture, because usually most of these problems involve geometric, uh, geometric figures. And third, um, use an algebraic equation, and this should be obvious once you do this multiple times, so use an algebraic equation that relates the variables. Okay. And once you do this a few times, you will see that this is very, this is technically the key to the solving these problems. Also uh, here, note, uh, be very careful on which is the independent variable. That means uh, which is the variable you're taking the derivative with respect to. We did mostly x, but x is not the only, only variable. Most of these problems, not all of them, but many of these problems uh, depend on time. So therefore the, the independent variables is usually time. Like things are changing with respect to, to time. For example, x itself could be a derivative, I mean, could be a variable that depends on, on time. And usually if you wanna take the derivative with respect to time, Instead of saying x prime, we usually use x dot, and that's going to be written the x dt. So this notation is used a lot in, in physics. But the point here is you have to be very careful which one is the variable you are taking the derivative with respect to. So in this case, we'll be with respect to time. And I believe the first examples we do are all with respect to time. All right, so let's try this example. The problem says the following. An oil rig uh, springs a leak in the consins and the oil is pressed in a circular patch around the rig. So that means, let's say that the rig is right here and the oil is uh, spread in a circular pattern so like this. Okay, well these are supposed to be to the circles. And it says either radius oil, uh, either either radius of the oil patch increases, so here is it's increasing. Rate is increasing the, the this is going to mean that the derivative is positive. If it decreases then the derivative will be negative at a rate of thirty um, meters per hour. So therefore this is increasing by 30 meters per hour in the radius. So how fast is the, is the area of the patch increasing when the patch has a radius of um, 100 meters? So remember, once you read the question a couple of times, 
what is the given information? The given information is that the radius of the oil patch increases at a rate of 30 miles per hour. So that's a, that's a derivative. So this means that dr dt is equals to 30 or 30 miles per, per hour. Okay. Also, it says how fast is the area increasing? So the question is, um, how, what is the A, dt? So this is the actual question. The other part that is given is you wanna know this when R is equals to 100. So that's what the, the question is. So therefore we write a problem a couple times. Uh, we got the given information. In this case, we draw the, the picture. And then it says to use an algebraic equation that relates the, the variables. Well, here it's asking you for area. So remember the formula for area is equals to pi r squared. And here, uh, things are changing with respect to time, like I say here. So therefore, um, the area in terms of time uh, or the area will be changing with respect to time, as you can see here. This is the area when the radius is this big, and as the radius keeps changing or increasing, you can see that the area keeps getting bigger. So therefore, we take the derivative with respect to, uh, so take derivative with respect to time, why with respect to time? Because we want to see how is the area changing with respect to time. So therefore, this is technically implicit differentiation in some sense. So this will be dA dt, which is where we want. Pi is a constant, so this will be 2 pi r times dr dt. So that's the implicit part. So then if we plug the information, this will be 2 pi r is 100 and the RDT is 30. So once you multiply everything, this is equals to 6,000 6, pi meters square per hour. So that's the rate at which the area is increasing. It's increasing by 6,000 pi meters square every hour. That's it. So again, before we go to the next questions, all of them will be the same. Read the problem a few times get the given information, uh, draw a picture if needed, and then this is very important to have an equation that relates the variables. The variables here is the radius and the area. This is what you wanna find. So we take the derivative of the area formula with respect to t, now with respect to r, with respect to time, and you are using implicit differentiation in here and then just plug in the information, and that's it. All right, well, let's try a couple more. So the next example says the following. You have two planes that are approaching an uh, airport. So let's say that uh, this is the, the airport, and uh, one is flying due west. So due west means it's going this way, and let's say this is x, okay? And the other one is flying north. So let's say north is this way. And for lack of a better notation, let's call this this y. Okay. So therefore, one plane is going this way. And the other one is going this way. And obviously, both of them are approaching the airport. And clearly, you can see that there is a distance between the, the two planes. So we're going to call z. And this is the distance between the planes and obviously each of them it has different different speeds all right so what is the given information well the given information is that the the one at the west is flying at 120 miles per hour so that means the dx dt is equals to minus 120. 
y is a minus because you can see that the distance is getting smaller until it gets to zero so that's why this one has to be to be minus using the same uh, logic then dy dt is uh, equals to 1 minus 1 150 miles per hour now the question is uh, how fast is the distance between the place changing and notice that the distance is getting smaller so the rate of change for dc dt also has to be negative so this is the question this is what we're trying to find we're trying to find this when um, uh, the west uh, plane is 100 miles from the airport so when this distance is 180 and when this one this distance is 225 so therefore when x is um, sorry when x is equals to 180 and y is equals to 225 or 225 miles again before we try to solve the problem let's read it one more time so the problem is telling you that there is a plane flying this way at 120 miles per hour it is technically negative because the distance is getting smaller between the two planes so the distance between here and here is getting smaller as you can see until it will get to, to zero it is telling you that this plane is flying at 150 miles per hour and the question is how is the distance between the two planes changing which is dc dt when the distance between here and here is 180 and the distance between here and here is uh, uh, 225 now clearly now i told you you need an equation that relates the quantities and the equation is going to be the pythagorean theorem because you can see this is clearly a, a triangle so therefore the equation we have is x squared plus y squared is equals to, to c squared. Now we take the derivative with respect to time. We're going to have 2 dx dt plus 2, uh, 2x, two uh, sorry, I'm missing the x in here. So this is technically using implicit differentiation 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt and this will be equals to 2z dc dt and remember the one we're trying to find is dz dt here notice you can cancel the the twos right away for this particular problem and you can plug in the values right there or you can solve for a for z first if we solve for z, dz, dt, and this is just basic algebra, you should stop the video and check this is the case. This will be x uh, dx dt plus y dy dt, everything divided by, by, z, by z. Now, this we already know. We know this, we know this, and we know this because it was given right here so the only one we don't have so far is z and then we'll use the pythagorean theorem to find that one so in this particular case x I remember is 180 dz dt i'm sorry dx dt is minus 120 and then y is uh 225 this is minus 150 and the only one we need to figure out is z so in this case uh, for z if we use the pythagorean theorem remember this is 2 to 5 and this one is uh, 180 so z will be the square root of 180 square plus 225 square so whatever this is it will be the value that you will put in there this is around actually uh two eighty eight point one so this will be two eighty eight point one and whatever you get that's the answer so just finish that part 
and that's it. So notice here again how the key is the equation that links the variables, which in this case is a Pythagorean term. And this is actually very, very useful. All right, so let's go to the next example. So you can see this is actually not as bad as it looks. All right, the next question says the following. Sun uh, falls uh, from an overhead bend accumulated in a conical pile with a radius that is always three times its height. Well, that's not very realistic, but that's, let's say that's the case. If the sun falls from the beam at a rate, so that is the derivative, or 12 feet cube per minute, how fast is the height of the pile changing when the pile is 10 feet high? All right, so first, what is the, the given information? The given information that we have is that it tells us a conical pile. So the volume for a conic is one third pi r square h. Okay? And it tells you that the radius is always three times the, the height. That's what it says uh, here. It also tells you that the sun falls from a beam at a rate of 12 feet q. So this is telling you the cubic units, so that's telling you that dB, dt, so the way the volume is changing, is 12 feet q per, per minute. Okay? So the question is, what is the h dt? That's what it's asking. How fast is the high changing when uh, h is equals to 10 feet? So that's what you want to find. All right, so next, remember you need to have a diagram. So you have sand that is falling from some bend, and this is creating a cone, okay, or a cone shape. Okay, remember the cone is supposed to look like this. This part is the height, which is a function that depends on time. And here, obviously, you're gonna have the the radius, okay? And remember, the radius is also a function that depends on on time. All right. So here, the geometric uh, or the the algebraic equation is the equation for volume, which is this. But here, there is a small uh, issue that you have two variables. And if you do the derivative from here, you're gonna to have to use the product rule, and you are gonna need extra information that you don't you don't have for this particular case. You still can do it that way, but it will be more more difficult. So instead, you're gonna use this before you take the derivative. Therefore, uh, if we use this value for r, this means that the volume is equals to one third pi times three h square times h which once you simplify you're going to have 9 divided by 3 is 3 so this will be 3 pi h q and now you only have one variable and that will make life much easier so therefore if we take the derivative now with respect to time you're going to end up with 9 pi h square the h dt and remember that we're trying to find the value for for h. That's what we want. So therefore, if we solve for the h dt, from here we get the, form, the following formula. The h dt is going to be dv dt, which remember we already say that this one from here is equals to 12, um, this is 12 feet q per minute. So therefore, this will be 12 feet Q per minute divided by 9 pi H square. But remember the value for H is equals to 10 feet. So if we plug in 10, this will be 10 feet square. And then you should stop the video and check the following computation is around a point zero four two uh, feet per minute so that's how the 
height is increasing. And, and that's it. All right, you didn't get the last three examples. This is the last chance to redeem your scenes. So here it is. So this is what the question says. An observer stands 200 meters from the launch, uh, launch site of a hard air balloon. And the balloon is rising vertically at a constant rate of four meters per second, okay? So this is technically what you have so far. So you have a person standing here. This is the launch place. And from here to here is 200, 200 meters. And the balloon is going up it's exactly vertically. So that means this is the high. So it's still the given information is the dh dt is equals to four meters per second. So this part. Okay. And then it says how fast is the angle of elevation of the balloon increasing of 30 seconds after the launch. So now this is by we mean by angle of elevation which is which is theta. So the question is technically what is the theta dt? Like how fast is this changing after uh, 30 seconds? Okay. So that's what the question is asking. After 30 seconds. Okay, so therefore t is 30. Now the last thing we need is a equation that relates all the quantities. And this looks like the Pythagorean theorem could be a good uh, choice, but for this case, since we're talking about the angle, the Pythagorean theorem may not be the best case. I mean, you may still you, you may still need it to figure some things, but not to take the, the derivatives. Probably the best thing to do here is to use tangent. Remember, tangent, by definition, is the opposite over the uh, adjacent. So therefore, in this case, this would be equals to h over 200. The 200 doesn't change. So therefore, from here, that means that h is just equals to 200 times tangent theta. So now we take the derivative with respect to time, we're going to get uh, the h dt, which we already know is equals to this, that this will be 200, which is a constant times the derivative of tangent, or the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And then using the chain rule or the implicit differentiation, you get this. And remember, this is the part that we, this is what we want. So from here, you can uh, solve for d theta dt, and this will be the h dt, which we know is 4 meters per second, divided by um, 200 times secant squared theta. Now, after 30 seconds, we're going to get the following triangle. This one is 200 meters. This is not going to change because that's the distance between the person and the balloon. But after 30 seconds, this will be 120 uh, Y because it's increasing uh, four seconds, uh, four minutes per second. So after 30 seconds, it has to be 100 and 120. So now this part, you may use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this value and we're going to need that otherwise we will not be able to figure out what secant secant is so therefore from here uh 200 square plus 120 square has to be equals to c square and then c is around uh 233 you use the pythagorean term now from here now we can figure out what cosine theta is and cosine will be 200 over 233, which means that secant is going to be 233 divided by 2, 200. Okay, so therefore, uh, 
if we plug in all the information this should be four meters per second for the top so this gives you this and then on the bottom we'll get 200 times secant square which is a uh, 233 divided by 200 the whole thing square and uh, once you simplify everything this is around 0.015 radians per second okay so just make sure you stop the video and compute these these values and especially this whole thing so here this gives you all of this all right and that's it so now most of the problems are uh the work problems you have are slight versions of these versions the problems so therefore you can do these four problems you could do most most of them there are special cases and i will do a different one during the class but this is pretty much the main main idea all right that's it for section 3.9